think the dealership is coming up real soon. Big old American flag is a telltale sign. Jeep, jeep, jeep. Parts. Oh. Hey, one more. One more. Parts and service. Alfa Romeo. Gross. Tiny. They're made for midgets. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are going to replace the thermostat on this Hemi here. Uh, it's a 5.7 Hemi. We just got this in Rochester, New York. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out. But uh, it has been sitting at the dealership probably for about a month, maybe two, maybe more. And sometimes when vehicles sit for a while uh, and then you start it up and drive it, junk can cause the thermostat to seize up on you. So this thing got a little hot sprayed coolant everywhere if you can see this it's all splattered up here but uh pretty standard symptoms of a stuck thermostat so i went ahead hit up the dealership got the uh the 5.7 hemi thermostat it's part number 5202898 um it's 40 bucks i know the thermostats at autozone were uh, 20 but this thing has something that the others don't it says made in the usa right here so we're going to change this thermostat and flush out all the Spoiler alert. The new thermostat and the coolant flush did not fix the overheating problem. It wasn't a sticky thermostat. I had no idea what it was, but I can't in good conscience post a video of how to fix thermostat if the thermostat wasn't the cause of the problem. Uh, I might have a new problem. It could be serious. I don't know what it is yet. Maybe when this is all sorted out, I can help some of you guys out that have a Commander or uh, any vehicle with the 5.7 liter Hemi. So, here's how it all started. Alright guys, we just did about 250 miles on the new Commander. Um, so far, I love this thing. It's probably the nicest Jeep I've ever driven. So as you all know, we just purchased a new Commander. Um, well, it's not new, it's uh, got 76,000 miles, but it was the newest Commander I could find. Um, we drove it from Rochester, New York, back out to Long Island, 500 miles. 500 miles, ran like a top, it was amazing. I love that you could be doing 80, step on it and get pulled back into your seat. That's fantastic. It's heavy for you. All right, here we go. Face. It's fun. Oh yeah. Then for the next week or so, we've been driving around town. It's a great vehicle, driving the kids to school, getting the groceries. And then on the way home from the grocery store one day, get a call from my wife. She says the commander overheated. I'm a little overheated myself. She says the check gauges light goes on and the temperature's pinned all the way up on hot. Well, for me, it's hot. For you, that's hot. Doesn't matter. Uh, the point is our new commander is overheated and uh, that ain't right so brought it home figured hey might be a sticky thermostat thermostat to seize up on you thermostat to seize up on you and at the time it seemed like that was the most logical solution um there was nothing wrong with the vehicle it drove absolutely fine for 500 miles um if it was a serious problem i don't think we would have made that journey home so Thermostat it was, and you know what? The thermostat is simple enough. We'll break the problem down logically. Uh, process of elimination will have you do the simplest thing first. Thermostat. 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 So since we had some family over for my daughter's birthday party, Uncle Rob, due to help me build my brother's Jeep down in Alabama, thanks Rob, we took our time to do a really nice job on this thermostat. Cleaned everything up, went for a test drive, everything seemed fine. Chili Pepper Red XJ <laughs> with the light bar on the hood. That's right, Doug. Now, this wasn't a one, two, three, I'm done job. I made sure I took my time to clean out the radiator, I cleaned out the heater core, flushed out the block, took all the hoses off and cleaned them. When I put it all back together and I refilled the coolant, I made sure I opened up the bleeder and I topped it off and got all the air out. And I tried my best to do a great job for my new car. Now if I was going to be mixing my own coolant, I'd be using distilled water. 
because I don't want any more minerals and contaminants in the engine that has to be there. So I'm just going to continue on my flush. It's something that I take pride in. I want my vehicles to be reliable. My family drives in that commander, and it really ticked me off when it overheated again. I stand corrected. So we're here with the commander again, and it happened again. She was riding on the highway, started getting hot, and all of a sudden, coolant just blasted out of the reservoir and uh, went all over. So why is this happening? Common knowledge would be to change the thermostat every time you change a water pump. Ah, doesn't look too terrible. I realized that the water pump was brand new. Actually looks new. Uh, so that kind of put up a red flag. And when I emptied the coolant, I noticed that the coolant was kind of dirty. So I have a new water pump, um, maybe a new thermostat and dirty coolant. Things were starting to not add up and it started getting me concerned. So what I did was I checked the repair orders for the car while it was at the dealership. And sure enough, water pump is listed and only one bottle of coolant but a thermostat is not listed. So to me, they fixed a water pump for God knows what issue with the old thermostat and they didn't even flush the coolant. Um, now I'm not feeling too good as a buyer. I just bought this thing for my family, spent a lot of money. I spent the whole day flying up there, driving back and a week, two weeks later, the thing craps out. Thank God I got a warranty. Um, all I know now is my commander's overheating. It's not the thermostat. It's not the water pump since that's brand new. So what am I to do? I started looking up commanders, uh, looking up 5.7 liter Hemi's. And one of the things I noticed is people were saying that the radiator cap could actually cause a problem in the Hemi. So went right out to the auto parts store and I got a radiator cap. All right back here with our uh, new radiator cap and this one's got the pressure release uh, lever on it so that could help. While I was there I got new radiator hoses. I figured maybe the suction is collapsing the hoses and that's what's causing it to overheat. And we got the new upper radiator hose. So now I'm at the point where by process of elimination I changed the radiator hoses in case they were collapsing, the radiator cap in case it wasn't giving me the right pressure, and the thermostat in case it was getting stuck. So I shot an email over to the dealership. I want to let them know that we're walking into warranty territory. Um, I'm having some trouble and I asked them if maybe they could point me in the right direction. I want to know why they replaced the water pump. So this is the email I got back. Uh, Dan, I took a look at your warranty. I believe the water pump and radiator are covered items as well as the manifold, engine block, and heads. That's good. Um, I spoke with the tech who worked on your commander, and he mentioned a sticking thermostat as a possibility. <laughs> we rolled that out. This is common in cold weather when a vehicle hasn't been driven daily. It did not have any problems with overheating while it was here. I hope this helps your mechanic. I'm the mechanic. It did not help me. I changed the thermostat. I flushed the coolant, flushed the radiator, replaced the radiator hoses, replaced the radiator cap. I made sure I purged all the air out. I cannot think of anything else except for a bad water pump or the dreaded head gasket. That would absolutely suck. So I'm deferring this to a higher power. I sent the commander over to Gabe at Gabe's Auto Repair. Gabe is an amazing mechanic. He's a great friend, and uh, I hope he's able to to solve this mystery. Um, I don't want it to be a head gasket. It's under warranty, but that that just sucks, you know. Getting a brand new car um, and having a head gasket issue. Uh, that's not something I want to deal with right now. But um, hey, that's reality. <laughs> Just threw up in here, people. That's the reality. Gotta deal with it. I'm not mad at the dealership. I don't think they tried to get one over on me. It drove fine, 500 miles all the way home. I don't know what the hell happened. It's 
So I guess I'll keep you guys posted. And uh, wish me luck. Hope for the best. This is going to be a great vehicle. This is going to be a great vehicle. Great vehicle. All right, guys, I just got a call from Gabe. The man himself is driving the Commander right now. I guess he fixed whatever was wrong with it. Um, could only imagine what it was. I'm hoping it wasn't too serious, like the head gasket, but he said he's on the road, and he should be here any minute, and I'm dying to know what he did to it. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, was that a big lens? <laughs> it's the big lens. Why, Dan, how are you? Very good, how are you? Good, are you ready to take a ride? Let's do it. Dan and his Jeep Commander. <laughs> this is awesome. Top of the line, in absolute perfect condition. All leather interior. Well, you know, uh, bogus water pump? Yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. The one thing the dealer replaced. Well, it's funny, your dealer actually put a GMB aftermarket water pump in your truck. Get the hell out of here. It's not even a dealer water pump. No shit. Nope. I, I thought dealers use dealer parts, meaning... Not all the time. Unbelievable. Well, she is cool. Yeah, well, it was definitely frustrating to me, because I did the thermostat, I gave it a flush, and yeah. nothing. We actually took the thermostat out, lowered the water temp I mean, the radiator low enough so we could see the water pump spinning, and it was spinning fine. Yeah. But when you put the water, the antifreeze back in it, and you put it underneath pressure. Uh, on the load, that, yeah, it wouldn't the, spin. The blade just starts slipping on top of the shaft. Unbelievable. We removed it, put a new water pump in, and it actually has a steel impeller. Aha. Uh -huh. So that, that solved your problem. It's we a noticed right away, as soon as we started up, it got heat right away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just started falling apart. I mean, it wasn't circulating, no heat, no nothing. And that was scary because it's supposed to be a new new water pump. But that is a little weird that the dealer doesn't use... Uh... Dealer parts. Yeah. Yeah, well... And that, that definitely wouldn't have been number one on my list, is checking the brand new water pump. You know? No, I never saw a brand new one go. I have seen ones older. Yeah. And the one they had was... Uh, GMB. GMB. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you heard it, guys. Don't use GMB water pumps. Brand new one failed. Son of a bee. Wish I had better news. All right, Dan, there's your water pump. Yeah. It old looks really pump. good. GMB? Yep. It's GMB right there. All right, guys. Do not buy this water pump for your Hemi. <laughs> All right, well, look at that. Turn around. Let's look at Don't look. Everything seems fine. Ready? Okay, you now ready? turn around and try to put some pressure behind it. Hold it. <laughs> okay, and it's spinning. Now let's see both sides at the same time. Hold it straight up. See that? Yep, so you're spinning that and the impeller's not the moving. The impeller's not moving. No. Nope. Unbelievable. So turn it upside down so we can actually see it. Hold that and spin it. That way you can see the shaft staying. All right, now hold it. Hold it. Get some it light very on it. close. Yep, there it there is. you go. Unbelievable. It's spinning in the housing. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow. And that, my friend, was why your car or, or your truck with your Hemi was overheating. Uh uh uh. Jackie's Hemi. <laughs> All right, Jackie's Hemi. I'm sorry, Jackie. That's Jackie's Hemi. <laughs> Jackie's Hemi. How about that? Okay, so we replaced it with a gauge water pump. And the, uh... Which, uh, the part number is a 43558. And that's a steel impeller on that water pump. Fantastic. Oh, man. When she overheated, she definitely sneezed out coolant everywhere. Uh, gonna have to wipe her down. Oh, my goodness. I'm just glad it's running and it's back on track. Fantastic. Hi, right, Dan. You now got your Jeep Commander. Drove it from Rochester, New York, brought it back, and then sat in the shop for five days, yeah. figuring out your issue of overheating. <laughs> so what do you think? Was it smart enough to get the Jeep Commander still, or you should have just went out and got another uh, Ford Explorer? Remember when I told you uh, I'm thinking about getting the Commander? You said, how old is it? Ten years old? What did you tell me? 
Uh, going in on the new Explorer. And what did I do? You went in and I got Jeep Commander. Should I have listened to you? Nah, well, you really did make a good decision anyway. It's a real good Jeep. Just happened to have a defective part in it. Yeah. So we got over a little obstacle and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll go another 25,000 miles without any other repairs and you'll be a happy person. I think so. And that speaks volumes of the wisdom of Gabe. I'm just, you know, want to know something? I'm just happy that you got another black beauty. That's right. That's right. There it goes. Now you got two black booties. What, black booty? <laughs> 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 oh, I, that. I think I think that's a wrap for this video. We're gonna end it on a high note. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Commander's up and running. Uh, give this video a like. Remember to subscribe. <laughs> I'll see you on the next project.